and free indeed. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I'm so happy to be here in church today. I'm believing God for an incredible time in his house. I come expecting God to do something in my life. Come on. How many of you come ready to receive from God? Now, how many of you came ready to give your best worship to God today? Amen. I'm believing God for it. Amen. If you have a need, we're going to take all these needs to the Lord in prayer. As we enter into this service today, we're believing God for great things. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to share with your people today. God, we're so glad for the fellowship that we have with the believers. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to come in this house and have your way, God, in every word we say, every song we sing, everything that we do. May it be seasoned with the anointing of the Holy Holy Ghost. God, don't let a person leave this house that has not been challenged or changed or transformed by your spirit. Touch every life. Meet every need. Bless every family and home that is represented. And God, will be so careful to give you glory, praise, and honor for everything accomplished as a result of this service today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn around. Find two or three people. Shake their hands. Tell them how glad you are to see them in the house of God. And let's worship him together. I believe he's going to meet us here.
Amen. We have a reason to rejoice, don't we? As children of God, amen, we are saved from the enemies of this life. And we are so glad to see all of you in the house of God. Aren't you happy to be in the house of God this Sunday morning, this beautiful day that God has given us? What a privilege it is to come together as the family of God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. If you are here today and you are visiting with us, we want you to know right here from the start that we are so glad that you made it to church today. You, you are so welcome here. You are part of this family and we are so glad that you are here. You've made the effort. You come on. You got your church clothes on. You drove here from your homes. You didn't have to go anywhere. You didn't have to go to church at all. But here you are in the presence of God with the family of God. And we want to say to you, if you are visiting with us or you're watching us online, just how thankful we are that you made it to East Longburg. Can we let all of our guests know how glad we are to see them? Amen. Praise the Lord. You get in here with us today and you just worship with us. We're not crazy, I promise you. We're just excited about Jesus, that's all. Amen. If you knew where he brought me from, come on. If you just knew where he brought me through, you, you know why I'm shouting. Come on. I ain't going to preach, I could, but I'm so thankful for that. And please join us tonight if you're able at 6 o'clock for the Hour of Power prayer meeting. This is a time where we come together and we devote this time to Jesus. We pray as a church. I know you can pray at home. I know you can pray in your prayer closet. We expect you to. But there's something about corporate prayer when we come together as believers. We want to see you tonight. If you are physically able, we want to see you out here tonight at 6 o'clock. We're going to have a wonderful time together. We're going to meet with God. He's going to come down and meet with us. Make every effort you can to be here, and I promise you will not be disappointed. Then on Wednesday night, oh, man, I love Wednesday night. I tell you what, I enjoy preaching on Wednesday night. I enjoy the fellowship on Wednesday night. We've got something for your whole family. From the nursery all the way to senior adults, we have something here at our family training hour. And you don't want to miss this. Bring your kids, your grandkids, nieces and nephews. They have an incredible time out there in the fellowship hall, recreation. They have games. But they also have the Word of God. That is foremost out there. They're going to have their classes for their ages. We want to invite you, encourage you to bring your children out. God has been moving powerfully on Wednesday night. And we hope that you will be a part of it. Also, please remember, uh, unfortunately, as we heard on Wednesday night, uh, Brother Gary was fighting for his life. Brother Gary Woods has passed away. He has passed away. I spoke with uh, Brother Keith and Kay yesterday, and uh, they'll have his services tomorrow. His funeral services will be tomorrow, Monday, at the McCall Church of God. The visitation will begin at 3 p.m. and will last till 4 p.m., and the service will follow directly at 4 p.m., uh, so if you could go out tomorrow uh, and support that family, I know they would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Brother Gary and Sister Marie have been longtime members of this church. Uh, they have been faithful. I'm telling you, if the doors were open, they were here. And so we're, tomorrow we're going to celebrate his life. So if you can, uh, be there tomorrow at 3 o'clock for the visitation, 4 o'clock at the McCall Church of God. Uh, please remember them. And if you can't go, just please remember them in prayer. At this time, our ushers are coming to receive our morning time than our offering. As always, we want to say thank you so much for your giving, whether you give here in person or whether you give online. We are so thankful for all that you do for the kingdom of God. I don't believe you have to beg the people of God to give. I don't believe you have to beg Christians to give. Uh, when the Jesus said, whenever you give, don't give grudgingly. Don't give, uh, but you give out of the abundance of your heart. So today we get to worship God in our giving. This is no different than preaching. This is no different than singing. This is a part of worship that we get to participate in. So we ask you to give today. Give, give from the abundance of your heart. If you need any more information, if you want to give online, you can scan this QR code above me right now. This also has information for first-time guests. If you are visiting with us for the first time today, and we would like to hear more from you. So you can scan this guest, uh, this, this, this code right here during this time of giving. So we ask you to give. Brother Ricky, ask the blessing over this offering. Yes, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Amen. Give us unto God today. Let him bless you and your giving.
for praise today? Aren't you thankful for Jesus? Aren't you thankful for the blood? Oh, none of us would be here had it not been for the grace of God. Oh, his mercies are new every morning. And I am so glad that you are here. So thankful for you. As you're turning in your Bibles, while you're standing, turn in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter number 19. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 19. While you're doing that, I just want to say thank you so much to our musicians, our singers, our media department for the fine work that they do every week, sending these services out all across the world. And we are so glad and we're thankful for you making the effort to join us today. We couldn't do this without you. We appreciate you so much for your faithfulness to come and be a part of what God is doing right here. Amen. We're not the only church, but I believe this is the best church around because I, amen, because I know it's people. I know the people here and I appreciate you so much. Have a message burning in my heart today. Cannot wait to share with you what I feel like God has shared with me. Book of Luke chapter 19 we're going to start reading there in verse number 29 through verse 35. If you have it, say amen. Amen. And it came to pass when Jesus was come nigh to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, Go ye into the village over against you in the which at your entering you shall find a colt Tied. Underline that right there. You shall find a colt tied. When you go into Bethany, you're going to go in there. And as soon as you walk in the village, you're going to look and you're going to find a colt tied. Whereon yet never man sat. When you find him, he said, loose him and bring him hither. Bring him here. And if any man asks you, why do you loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. Amen. And they that were sent went their way, and sure enough, wouldn't you know it, they found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owner thereof came running and said, Whoa, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why loose ye the colt? What are you doing? And they said, the Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. And they cast their garments upon the coat. Look at this. And they set Jesus their own. If any man asks you, why do you loose him? This coat that's tied. If anybody asks you, why do you loose him? Thus shall you say, because the Lord hath need of him. Of him. I'm going to preach to you this morning a message God has burned in my spirit for today. A message simply titled, Loosed for a Purpose. Loosed for a Purpose. Do me a favor, stretch your hand this way and ask God to help us and anoint us in this service. Our Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for the privilege that we have to share your word with your people. God, we ask that you get me out of the way, that they see not me, but they see you. Lord, we ask for a supernatural anointing that will break every yoke, God, every bondage, every fetter that people have come in here today with. God, we ask that freedom be in this house. We speak it, God. Loose every person, every life, every mind, every heart, every family, every young person in the name of Jesus. God, may there be an anointing in this place that makes the preaching and the hearing of your word come easy. Bless us, God. Not only to speak, but also to receive this word as you have given it to us today. Help us, God. I'm just a messenger. I'm just a man. I know that a flesh and bone, but God, I'm your man. Anointed by your spirit, and we ask you, Holy Spirit, to touch us one more time. Move in this house. We rebuke every distraction in the name of Jesus. Every demon of hell that'll try to disrupt and, and hinder this service, we rebuke in the name of Jesus. And we'll be careful, God, to give you glory, praise, and honor for it all in Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you see it, find at least two people and tell them you've been loosed for a purpose. Amen. Praise the name of God. It's the first Palm Sunday. Jerusalem is at a fever pitch as Jews from all of the world have converged here in Jerusalem 
for, to celebrate and observe the Passover. It's believed that this week there were more than half a million people in the holy city and Jerusalem is bursting at the seams. The city is teeming with both people and anticipation because they have all heard that Jesus of Nazareth may be coming to celebrate the Passover this week. The Passover is the high holy day for the Jews and this is where they would all come together and when they'd come together, they would remember how God has delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh. It was a time of testimony. It was a time of celebration, a time of reflection, a festival to recall the miracle of deliverance. The Passover commemorates and celebrates how God delivered Israel from the hand of Pharaoh. And in this particular season of celebration, the Israelites couldn't help but also remember that the same God that delivered them from Egypt is the same God who also delivered them from the Babylonians and he's the same God who also delivered them from the Greeks so you can imagine how this particular Passover in Jerusalem was special because the Jews once again at this time are now in need of deliverance not from the Egyptians not from the Babylonians not from the Greeks but today Israel is under the rule of the Roman Empire and they're military prowess is unmatched in all the world. Rome has even taken over the nation of Israel and have set up a military headquarters in the holy city of Jerusalem. So in this Passover season, as these Jews reflect on what God has delivered them from in the past, today many of the Jews in Israel are asking the question, can God do it for us again? Can God deliver us one more time? Can God send another deliverer or another Moses. This is why, this is why, church, this particular Passover was no ordinary festival because news has now spread that Jesus of Nazareth might be coming into town today. Woo, hallelujah. And this Jesus has been teaching and preaching and healing all throughout Israel. Some have called him a prophet. Others have called him a healer. Many have testified that Jesus is a deliverer. Some have even called him the Messiah and rumor has it Jesus is on the way the Sadducees oh God <laughs> Ah, I feel I appreciate it. The Sadducees had a long-standing tradition in which they believed that the Messiah would show up four days before the Passover. So on this Sunday morning, the gates of the temple were open so that the Messiah could walk right in into his rightful place. The tensions around the town was so thick that it could be cut with a knife. Everyone is anticipating. Everyone is waiting for something to happen. We're not sure what, we're not sure when but something is soon bound to happen let me preach to the church a little bit right here, I'm not an end time prophet, don't claim to be I'm not an expert in eschatology but don't you just feel like something is bound to happen any day now Woo. You don't need to be a theologian to know that something has shifted in the atmosphere. There is a holy anticipation that is nearly tangible in the air. I believe the return of Jesus Christ is imminent. And today, as we celebrate the first Palm Sunday, I believe with all my heart, it could very well be the last Palm Sunday that we ever get to celebrate together on this side of glory. Because Jesus is just one town over. Jesus is just over in Bethany and almost ready to enter into Jerusalem and fulfill every prophecy from the very beginning. He has been preparing for this day since the beginning of his earthly ministry. This is the day that Jesus will boldly proclaim himself to be the fulfillment of all the scriptures. Today, today, he will set the plan of salvation into motion. In other days, he would, he would go around, he would circumvent Jerusalem because because he knew what was waiting for him. But today, he has set his face like a flint toward the holy city. Nothing can stop him now from coming into the city. Nobody can stand in his way. And the anticipation is building. Everyone is preparing for his arrival. Even the Romans, even the soldiers, the Jews, his followers, the disciples, everyone is preparing for his arrival. But before Jesus makes his triumphant entry into the eastern gate, he pauses just one town over 
And he makes this unique request. There's a large crowd that has already assembled around Jesus on the top of the Mount of Olives. And everyone presently is wondering why Jesus has stopped his procession into Jerusalem. It's not a far walk from the top of the Mount of Olives into the holy city of Jerusalem. You know, sis, you've been there yourself. It's just a few hundred yards at most. And everyone with Jesus and everyone surrounding Jesus can clearly see the eastern gate is open and that Jesus will pass through. They know they know the route. It's not far at all. But, 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 but for now, Jesus has stopped everything. He stopped the whole parade. He stopped the celebration before he walks into the city. And he calls two of his disciples. These were likely Peter and John. He calls them. He says, come here, boys. He said, Jesus, why do we stop? Why do we stop? He said, let me tell you what. He says to them, he said, let me tell you why. I got a job for y'all to do. He said, I need you two men to go over in the village over against you. And whenever you enter into that city, you're going to find a colt tied whereon never a man has sat. And you're going to loose him and bring him hither. Oh, yes. And if anybody asks you, why do you loose him? Thus you shall say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. What an interesting request, Jesus. All right, this is a strange time to be asking for this, but, 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 but God, you stopped everything for us to do this. You've stopped your movement. You've stopped the momentum. You've stopped the procession to send two disciples to look for a colt that was tied up and bound. And if that's not strange enough, after they find this young donkey that, that does not belong to them, they are to loose this donkey and bring it back to Jesus. He stopped everything, my God, to find a tied up donkey. He stopped everything to find a tied up donkey. And everyone around him is left wondering why. What in the world is going on? But you hear me, church. Jesus has a purpose for the pause. He has a reason for this strange request. And as strange as it seems in the moment, the Lord knows he has to stop here before he can go any further. You see, Jesus needs this little donkey not only to make a grand entrance into Jerusalem, but he needs this donkey to fulfill all the scriptures of and all the prophecies about himself. Matthew explains to us why Jesus needed this young donkey on this day. Matthew said all of this was done. The reason he got this donkey, all of this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Zechariah 500 years before saying, tell the daughter of Zion, my God, tell the children of Israel, behold your king cometh unto thee meek and sitting upon an ass and the colt the foal of and ask. Jesus is making a statement to the children of Israel. He's making a statement in the holy city of Jerusalem. He is revealing to the daughter of Zion his purpose in coming. He is proclaiming to the world on this Palm Sunday that he is the Messiah. He is the fulfillment of Zechariah's prophecy. He is the true king of Israel. And in order for the people to recognize him as king, and in order for them to, 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 to recognize and realize and accept him as their king, Jesus first needs a donkey. If Jesus just strolls up through the eastern gate without a donkey, then he's not the Messiah. Jesus, mm, y'all missing a... <laughs> Jesus first needs a donkey. You see, he needs a little donkey that has never been ridden before. Mm. He needs a little donkey, my God, that has never felt the weight of anything on his back before. He needs a little donkey to usher in his presence into Jerusalem. He needs a donkey to sit on and ride in order to fulfill scriptures and reveal his purpose. 
Let me remind you what Jesus is looking for as he is preparing to make his final triumphant entry into this world in these last days. I believe Jesus is still searching for a people who are not ashamed and not afraid to usher in his presence into this lost and dying world. He needs some folks who are willing to put Jesus on their shoulders and tote him into the city and declare he is the Messiah. He is the king of all kings. But I can promise you Jesus ain't going nowhere until everything is in order. So let's recap. Y'all ready? Let's recap. We're gonna, let's go back. Let's back up a little bit. Let's recap, all right? The eastern gate is open, correct? The temple gates are open. Uh, Jesus, the king, they're waiting for the king to enter. The king is, is, is waiting on the top of the Mount of Olives. Everything is ready. Mm, my God. Every Palm fronds are being cut down currently. Everything is getting ready for Jesus to enter into the city. We're only missing one thing, Brother Caleb. There's only missing one piece of the puzzle. There's only one thing that we're lacking. There ain't no donkey. There's no means or method to usher in the Messiah. There's not a beast of burden that will carry Jesus into the city. But while everyone is wondering and waiting, while everyone around them is pondering and, and wondering why the pause and, and they're wondering why what has taken so long, while everyone is trying to figure out the answers, God has been putting all the pieces together. Yet God knows that everything hinges on these two disciples finding a donkey that is tied up. Everything, everything. If we don't have a donkey, we don't have, this story isn't true. Jesus isn't the Messiah. He doesn't fulfill the scriptures. He's not the rightful king. He's not the heir of God. But there's a few things about this donkey on this Palm Sunday that I want to share with you today because I notice several similarities between this donkey and myself. It's hard to laugh. And not just the fact that I'm stubborn which I am. But I believe we can learn something from about God and his relationship to his people through this little tied up donkey over in Bethany. Jesus tells Peter and John, he says, as soon, boys, if you enter into the city, you will find a colt tied whereon never a man has said. It's interesting to me that Jesus had this plan with this donkey in mind from the beginning. The Lord had a purpose for this little donkey. He knew when this donkey would be born. He knew the exact place where he would be found. He already had a plan for him in place. Now he just needed someone to go find him and loose him. Let me preach to you just a minute. Let me remind you of something you already know. Jesus has a plan and a purpose for our lives from the beginning. Oh, yes. He told the prophet Jeremiah, he said, while I was still forming you and weaving you in your mother's womb, I already ordained you. I already anointed you. I already appointed you. My God, before you were a twinkle in your mother's eye, he said, I had a plan for you from the beginning. He had a purpose in mind that his spirit would settle on us and his glory would rest on us and he could use you and I to usher in his presence. Hallelujah. So what does he do? He sends some disciples to come find us when you and I were lost. He sent somebody to where we were when we were tied up and bound that he might bring us to Jesus and lead us out of that place of bondage in the freedom that only comes with knowing Christ. Every one of us are here today. Every last one of us are here today because Jesus knew exactly where we were and he knew exactly how to find us. I said we are all here this morning, my God, because Jesus knew exactly where we were and he knew exactly how to find us and he knew that we would be tied up when he found us, but he came looking for us anyway because in his mercy and in his grace and by his plan provision he's got a purpose for our life Jesus said when you find this donkey you should, when you find him you're going to find this colt tied this is what's incredible brother Chris this is what's incredible because not only did Jesus know where the donkey was 
But he also knew that when he found him, he would be tied. When he found him, when you find him, he's going to be bound. Go look for him. And when you find him, my God, he's going to be tied. That word tied that Jesus uses here comes from the Greek word. It means exactly what you think it means. It means bound. When you find this little donkey, he's going to be bound. He's going to be imprisoned. The word means in Greek, fastened to. Mm. The word means when you find him, he's going to be fettered. Mm. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't helping me none. That's all right. The word means tethered. The word means firmly secured. When you find this little donkey, he's going to be tied up. Come here, Brother Caden. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Caden's going to be my little donkey. Come on, little donkey. Come on, little donkey. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's a young donkey. And he's a tied up donkey. He's a tethered donkey. Just take a few steps out, brother. Take a few steps. Come on, come on. Come on. Go as far as you can. That's it. Oh, he's tethered. He's bound. He's fettered. Mm. His movements have been limited. I'm about to preach. Ah, I feel it cranking up now. <laughs> he's, he's been bound. He said, when you find him, don't be surprised. Mm. When you find him and he's still bound. Don't be surprised when you find him that he's still tied up. Uh, don't be surprised when you find him if he looks like he's imprisoned or, or he's fettered or tethered and firmly secure. Jesus had foreknowledge that this donkey would be tied up. He knew the donkey's potential would be bound and imprisoned and tethered to whatever he was tied to. This donkey don't even know how strong he is because he's never felt a plow behind him. He don't know how much weight he can handle because he's been tethered all of his life. Never a man has sat on his back. He don't know what he's capable of because he has been bound and tethered all of his life. And in order for him to fulfill his purpose, Purpose, my God, in order for you to carry the weight of the glory of God, you have to first be loosed. You've got to first be freed. As long as you're bound, you can never usher in the presence of God. As long as you're bound, you'll never live up to your expectation. As long as you're bound, this donkey will never be free to feel the weight of the glory of God on his shoulders. I started chewing on this text this week. I wanted to preach something else, I promise y'all. I started chewing on this text this week. Brother Jared, I started wondering how many people in this church service today have never reached their full potential simply because they are still tied up and bound and fettered. How many, my God, how many people who love I shine them I know you in church. I know you got your church clothes on. I know you fixed your hair and you smell nice. But I just want to know how many of you, oh God, how you know how to play the church game. But I wonder how many of you are still bound today. You're still fettered today. You're still limited and inhibited today. Oh, come on, come on, step out, step out. Now try to lift your hands and worship. You can't do it, can you? Y'all your worship is bound your praise is bound he's got a bit in your mouth he's bridling your tongue you want to worship him but you can't try to lift him you want to praise him but you can't you know why because some of you I feel the Holy Ghost are still bound some of you have had limits on your life since the day you were born you've known nothing but ropes and fetters and chains and bridles and boundaries you've lived your entire life tethered been tethered for so long. You've been feathered for so long. You never know what you're capable of. Let me tell you something, Caden. As long as you stay tied up 
And as long as you stay bound, you will never know what you're capable of. You'll never know the weight of carrying, the weight of the glory of God. Oh, you see, being tied up, being tied up meant that this donkey could only go so far before he reached his limits. It meant that he was bound. He could only go so far. He didn't know what it was like to walk in freedom. Other donkeys walked by. Other donkeys walked by with a job, with a task. And little donkey, little Caden little would look at him and say, man, I wish I was like that. Look at others. They shout in church. Look Look at others walking in freedom. But here I am, I feel you God. But here I am bound and tethered to the same thing that has had me here after all this time. I wonder how many of us have never reached our full potential simply because we've been tied up. We're still bound and tethered to something that has a hold on us. We've been limited. Is how far we can go. Our potential is pinned up. Oh, I'm preaching to some of y'all. Our future is fettered. Our faith is firmly fastened. Our blessings are all bound tightly. But it's been so long that some of us have just come to accept our bondage as our reality. I'm going to slow down because I don't want you to miss what I'm saying. Just like this little donkey, some of us have known nothing but bondage. And we have come to grips with what has a grip on us. We've accepted that we'll always be bound by what we did, who we were, or where we're from. Shall I buy home? You want to be more. You want to. You want to. You want to branch out. You want to get further away, but you can. And you tethered to where you're born and the neighborhood you were born in and the family that you were born. Y'all ain't helping me. And the family curse that is on your life. And, and because your dad was an alcoholic and, and an abuser, you feel like you've got to be an alcoholic and an abuser. And, and you want to get over it, my God. And you want to get past it, but you're tethered. You're, but you're bound, my God. And because your mama was a whore, you feel like you've got to be a whore and sleep around. Because your daddy was a drug abuser, you feel like you've got to be a drug abuser, my God. It's because you're bound and you've never known what freedom tastes like. You never know what it feels like. You've been inhibited for most of your life and you've just accepted it. Accepted these chains are eternal. Let me ask you a question this morning while you're listening real good. You don't have to answer it out loud. You can answer it within your heart. What is it that has you tied up? I'll wait. I'll wait. What is it that has you bound? What is it they did to you that still has a hold on you right now? What did they say about you that hurts you so bad that you can't get past it and you're still bound by it? What happened to you all those years ago? My God. I don't want to miss you, God. But I ain't going to say it unless you tell me to. Mm. Mm. Who abused you in your family all those years ago that has kept you fettered all these years later? Come on, why are you still bound by anger? Why are you still mad at them after all this time? You can't even celebrate Jesus because you're so mad. Why are you still in bondage over that fear? Why are you letting anxiety ruin your life? Come on, you can't take enough drugs in the world to calm your mind down. You can't take enough sleeping pills to put yourself to sleep because you're so bound, you're so fettered, you're so tethered. Why does that hate still shackle you every day? What is it? Why does that lust have such control over you that you can't be freed from it? It's controlling your movements. It's controlling your actions. I would love to, come on, try to move. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can escape this way. Maybe I don't know. 
No, you stop. Go, go over there. Try that. Try that over there. Try that counseling session. Try. Come on, try this drug over here. It might. Come on, it might loosen it up a little bit. Come on, try. Come on, try this. Drug. Oh, it ain't helping either. I wonder what the problem. No matter where I go, I feel you, God. No matter what I do, no matter who I talk to, I'm still bound. I'm still bound. How am I still bound? How do these drugs still got a hold on me? How does these addictions have a hold on me? Why do these feelings still have a hold on me? It's because you have been tethered. You have been bound. You've been imprisoned. And even though you want to be free, oh God, I feel you, Jesus. And you want to be free. You want, come on, you want to have the freedom to worship. You want to have the freedom to celebrate. You're still in the back of your mind. You know you're bound. Who am I preaching to this morning? Oh God, who am I talking to this morning whose whole life has just about been bound by the enemy? Listen to me. I come this morning with a word from God for you today. If you don't hear nothing else I say, hear me. Jesus has sent word on this Palm Sunday, this beautiful Palm Sunday, to loose you and bring you hither. To loose him. Jesus said, when you see him, loose him. When you see him bound, I give you the authority to loose him. Whatsoever shall be bound in heaven shall be bound in the earth. Whatsoever shall be loosed in heaven shall be loosed in the earth. And I give you authority by my name to set him, my God, are y'all missing it? To set him free. When you see Caden bound, when you see him bound, he said, loose him. And bring him hither. That word loose, what does that mean? I'm so glad you asked. I was wondering that myself. That word, we know what the Greek word means to be tied. But that word loose that Jesus uses here in the Greek is the exact opposite. It's the antonym of the word tied. (laughs) Oh my, I'm about to to wear myself out preaching, but I'm about to preach it. When he said, when you see this donkey tied up, loose him. That word loose means to untie. <laughs> when you see him leashed, he said, unleash him. When you see him bound, he said, unbind him. When you see him tethered, it means untether him. When you see him shackled, it means unshackle him. You know the devil has tried to do a lot of things to you in your life. But today Jesus said, I'm going to undo everything that the devil has tried to do to you. It means to free and I love this. this, I love this Greek word. Not only does it mean to free, but it means to release what has been held back. Release. Mm. Have you ever been in a place with God where you get so close, you can almost feel his glory? You can almost feel the weight of his presence, but something is holding you back. There's something, come on, that's that's trying to, that's hindering you, that's inhibiting you, that's keeping you. You've been so close, you can almost touch him. You've been so close, you can almost feel him, but there's always something that's holding you back. That word loose means to release Hmm. what has been held back. It was Friday afternoon. I felt the Lord impress my spirit that he is going to loose some folks, but he's going to loose you for a purpose. God has more for you than being bound and being stuck, being fettered and being tied. God has so much more for you than the limitations that hell has put on your life. God has more for you than the boundaries that hell has set for you. I believe there are people here who have been living far beneath their purpose. People who have become accustomed to their bondage 
people who have learned to cope with the rope. But Jesus said in Luke 4 and 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance unto the captives to suffer the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty freedom them that are bruised oh hallelujah that's why the spirit of the Lord is moving in this house the same spirit that settled on Jesus is the same Holy Ghost that is at work in this house and he has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives And Jesus said, if any man ask you, why do you lose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. If anybody tries to stop you, mm, in the process, because I gave you authority. If anybody tries to stop you in the process, you tell them that I said, that I said, the Lord hath need of him. You tell him the Lord has a greater purpose for you, for them, than what you have. You tell them that God has a plan for their life, that God is greater than their chains and their ropes and their fetters that have bound him here. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here, Brother Caleb. Come, here. come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. All right, Peter. All right, John. Listen here. I'm going to send you over to Bethany. As soon as you walk in the city, you're going to see a mama donkey and you're going to see a colt. The colt's tied up now. He's bound. He's tethered. He can't go nowhere. Mm. But I'm sending you. I'm sending you to go to the bound donkey and I give you authority in my name to loose him and bring him to me because I've got a purpose for his life. You see, he's so young. I want to preach this. You see, he's so young. He's so young and tender. And he's not as strong as he's going to be one day. One day, Red, you're liable to be taller than me. Come on, one day you're liable to have muscles bigger than me. One day you're going to be stronger than me. You'll have more endurance and stamina than me. But right now, you're not. Right now, you're still young. Right now, you're still supple. Right now, you're still a little weak. And the enemy knows if I can tie him up when he's young, when he's tender, I can keep him here. And he will always believe that these fetters are stronger than him. Let me preach to some mamas and daddies in the house. Hell is after your children. You better believe me. The devil is after your babies. And the enemy knows as beautiful as these babies are. Look how pretty these babies are. The enemy knows what they're capable of. The enemy knows Brother Jerry, Sister Paula, what he's capable of. He knows the value in the donkey. He knows that one day he'll have the ability to pull up stumps, mm, to plow the fields, woo, shut that behind, to work in the harvest. So he's got to keep him tied up while he's young. He wants to get his mind consumed with pornography when he's a baby so that he'll always be bound by it when he gets older. Y'all ain't helping me. It's fine. I preach by myself. He wants him to be bound by, by fear and anxiety. He wants our young ladies to have a poor self-image of themselves so they'll always feel inferior and unworthy of the callings and the gifts of God. So he gets the young, tender donkey and he ties them up. Because if I can get them in middle school, if I can mess up his mind right now, I will. If I could destroy his little mind right now, I will. I want to get her so doped up on medicine she don't even know her name. And I'm going to confuse her and I'm going to ruin the rest of, oh, y'all ain't helping me. I want to ruin the rest of her life. I want to keep her bound. Mm -hmm. 
neighbor, but I feel the chain breaker in the house. He shut up behind. I feel the curse breaker in the house. I feel deliverance in the house. Oh, God. If I could bind them, if I could control her, if I could do, if I could ruin you, I'll do everything I can to tie you up and destroy you. That you make you doubt that God is real and that the Holy Ghost is real. I'll make you so confused you don't even know what gender you are. You won't even know who to date. You'll think it's normal to be a homosexual, but the devil is a lie. I said the devil is a lie. You can't have my babies. You can't have my children. You can't have him. You can't have him. Devil, you can't have him. You can't have God's hand is on him. God's anointing is on him. Before he was ever born, you hear me, Josh? God's hand was on him. He is anointed before he ever came out of his mother's womb. God has a purpose. And if hell could destroy him, he would. If hell could destroy him, he would. But I wonder God, some mamas and daddies and grandmas and grandpas would stand to your feet and tell hell right now, you can't have my baby. You can't have him. You can't have them. Trying to warp his little mind. Trying to constrict his anointing. Hula behind him. Trying to inhibit the flow of the oil of God. As long as you bound, you can't preach like you're supposed to. As long as you're bound with pride and ego, you'll never be what God wants you to be. As long as you're bound by lust, you'll never be what God wants you to be. My God. But the Lord has sent his word and he has sent his servants to come find those that are tied up and loose them and loose them and loose them by the authority of Jesus Christ. Well, I come not in my own accord. I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking on behalf of Jesus. I'm speaking on behalf of the Holy Ghost. He is ready to loose you. That was free, amen. You ready, Peter? You ready, John? Don't you go find him. Go around that pulpit. Go around the back of that organ. Come on. Go look for him. Go look for him. You're going to find him. Don't be surprised when he's bound. Yes, right. Oh, God. Oh, my God. There he is. Look, just like Jesus said. There, can you believe it? There is that donkey. Just like Jesus said. Can you believe it? My goodness, I can't believe it. And as these disciples approach this untrained, unbroken donkey, they get ready to loose the fetters. Start loosening the fetters. Why don't you start loosening the fetters? Now watch what happens. The moment they come out, whoa, 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 whoa. The owner of the donkey says, what are you doing? Hold on, hold on. What are you doing? That's my donkey. That belongs to me. I've had him bound since the day he was born. He's never walked more than six feet in all of his life. This is all he knows. He, come on, what do you think you're doing? Can you explain to me what you're doing here? I can, sir, I can. The Lord have need of him. The Lord have need of him. Listen to me, listen to me. After hell has had you bound for all these years, he's gonna put up a fight to let you go. But let me tell you something. When you and I as ambassadors of Christ speak on his behalf, like Brother Luther just did, when you and I speak on behalf of God, mm, 
The devil has no choice. The enemy has no choice. Anxiety has no choice. I'm calling it out. Fear has no choice. Ah, depression has no choice. Oppression has no choice. It's got to lose you. Sir, I have no choice. You said the Lord has need of him. You don't have to say nothing more because I'm subject to the name of Jesus. All demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Hell tremble. Who's who you say need? What's his name? My God. Who's who you say is going to ride him? My God. Hold up a son of my you mean God's going to use this thing but he ain't ever been robed before how do you know he ain't ever done nothing before he don't know nothing but this this is all he's ever known but when Jesus gets into the equation you can expect God to do the impossible God can do what we don't understand take those take those take those feathers off him Loose him, loose him, loose him. I don't know why you want him so bad. He ain't proven nothing. He ain't never done nothing. He ain't done nothing for me. But if you want him, if you want him so bad, you can have him. Take him to Jesus. Go take him, lead him over there to Jesus. Lead him over there to Jesus. I don't know, but I believe on the way back to Jesus. I believe Peter leaned down on those big old ears of that donkey and he said, son, you ain't seen nothing yet. Your life is just beginning. Your life is just starting. This is the first day of the rest of your life. You won't be bound anymore by the ropes, by the fetters, by the shackles. You won't be bound anymore by oppression, by depression. You don't need Zoloft no more because you're having an encounter with Jesus. And if Jesus will just sit on you, I said if the Holy Ghost will just rest on you, you can usher in this last day revival. The Bible said when he got to Jesus, they put their coats on him. And the Bible says, verse 35, they brought him to Jesus and they cast their garments upon the coat and they set Jesus thereon. In a matter of moments, Brother Caleb, the red has gone from fettered to freed. And now that he's loosed, they bring him in the presence of God. I wonder how hard it is for you to lift your hands now, donkey. Come on now. Come on now. Hold up high. Come on now, a little bit higher than that. You can, oh, come on. Wait a second. Ah. I want, oh, that mouth that had a bridle, had a bit in it. You couldn't move. You, could, you had no freedom, but now you can speak freely. Now, now you can say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say, come on now, say it now. Come on now, say it. Come on now. Say, praise the Lord. Come on, come on, Caleb. Come on, I heard you preach. You better preach. Hey. Oh, what is, oh, you got freedom, my God. Oh, you don't have to look over your shoulder, my Lord. Whenever you free for who the sun sets free. Who the sun sets free. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. If you're free in this house, you ought to worship him like you're free. If you're free in this house, you ought to lift your hands. And for the first time in this little donkey's life, he traded the weight of the shackles for the weight of the glory of God. <laughs> He's never carried anything like this before. 
But all of a sudden, he feels the weight of the glory of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, little donkey, I know you were bound this morning, but I had a purpose for you. I want you to usher me in to that holy city. Woo. I'm going to ride on your praise. Hold up, I lift your hands, baby. Lift your hands. Come on, come on, donkey. Come on, donkey. I want you to feel my glory. I want you to feel the... I know you've been encumbered a while. I know you've been bound, but Jesus said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Woo, hallelujah. Ah, he said, take my yoke upon you for I am meek and lowly at heart and you shall find rest for your soul. Jesus says, cast your burden that has held you bound. Cast it to the side and take my yoke upon me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You remember the first time you felt the weight of his glory? Remember the first time you came to a service and you wasn't just here because mom and daddy drug you, but you felt the Holy Ghost for the first time? Do you remember the time God saved your soul? You feel that way? You remember the first time you preached? A couple months ago, mm, and you learned that God not only anoints me to preach, but He anoints me to study. You remember that, my God? You remember that? I know you never felt nothing like it before, and there ain't nothing like it since. Who but the weight of His glory? I'm telling you right now, I said the weight of His glory is settled, my God. It's settled on a donkey that was bound and fettered and chained. My God, I want the weight of his glory to settle on me. God, let me feel your presence. Let me feel your anointing. I need somebody who can usher in my presence. I know you were bound when I found you, but I had a purpose for you the whole time. You were meant for more than the ropes. You were meant for more than the shackles. The Holy Ghost wanted to sit on you and rest on you. And the presence of God settled on you. The word set that Luke uses here just so happens to be the same word that he used in the book of Acts chapter 2. Luke is also the author of the book of Acts. He said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place. All in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And the Bible said, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat. It's the same word. It sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. I'll tell you what we need in this hour. Bubba, let me tell you what you're going to need, son. You're going to need the Holy Ghost to just sit on you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. in this place says the Lord my spirit is moving among you now you can feel the weight of my spirit in this house the weight is drawing you unto myself I'm drawing you to me my child I know where you are I know what has you bound 
I know what has kept you from me, what has limited you from coming to me. I know the burden and the frustration that you are bound by. I know the addictions that you are bound by. Yet still, I have sent my word to you this hour to loose you for my purpose. I have more for you than what you have for yourself. For my plans that I have for you are great. The plans that I have for you, I have had all of your life. You are living so far beneath the purpose that I have for you. Come to me this day. Give me your burden, your frustration. Give me your chains. Give me your problems. Give me your heartache and I shall rest upon you. My spirit shall settle upon you, my child. This is your day. I knew you were coming, says the Lord. I have ordained this service for you. Now come Come to me and I will set you free. I will loose you from those bands and fetters, from those chains that has held you down by the enemy. Come to me, says the Lord, and I shall restore. I shall undo everything the enemy has tried to do in your life. Come, says the living God. I am ready to make you new, says the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands and thank God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, just slip up your hands all across this sanctuary. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. Listen. I know it's embarrassing to, at a time like this, especially in a crowd like this, to admit I have some issues. I have some stuff going on. I understand that. I'm not going to try to embarrass anybody. I'm not. Gentlemen, move these altar benches back. Move them back. Give us room. Give us room. Help us. Move these altar benches back. What we're about to do is the most important part of this whole service. This is more important than the preaching. More important than the singing, the offering, all of that. What we're about to do is we are personally about to have an interaction with God. We're going to come to Him in all of our chains and all of our ropes and our mess and our problems and our issues. And we're going to say, God, I'm so tired of being bound. I'm so tired of being inhibited. But I'm ready, God, to be loosed and to be set free. This is what I want us to do. In a moment, I want to ask every parent, every grandparent, you grab them babies, your children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews. If they ain't yours, adopt them. And I want you to bring them to this altar. We want to serve notice on hell. You ain't going to mind my babies. <laughs> you can't have them. Come here, Judy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Hold this. Hold this. You listen to me good. There's more potential locked up inside of you than you even realize. And if the devil could, he would destroy you and bind you. But I want to let hell know right now, he can't have you. And God has something great. And I'll fight for you. I'll fight for you. I'll fight for you in the night. I'll fight for you every day. I'll fast and pray if I have to. I'll loose every fetter if I have to. Woo! Because I know what God has in store. And the devil knows what God has in store. And he's going to try to destroy you while he still can. I want you to come also. If you have your problems, if, you have, if you're bound, if you're addicted. Come on, if you've been dealing with stress, anxiety, pressure. Depression, oppression. I want you to come. 
all across this sanctuary. Let's stand to our feet all across the sanctuary. Oh, come on, I'd love to see 100%. Grab your children, grab your babies. Come on, come on, we're going to pray. We're going to pray together. Come on, I need some mothers in the church. I need some fathers in the church to come. Come on, come on, that's it, mama. Come on, come on. Hallelujah, we're going to pray. We're going to believe God for them right now. We're going to believe God to free and to loose. The enemy thought he had us. The enemy thought he could bind us. Woo, but I speak freedom in the name of Jesus. Come on, some of you parents need to take authority in the name. Come on, there's room. Press your way in. Come on, come on, there's plenty of room. You're going to take authority over the devil. Come on, you have authority through Jesus Christ. Grandma, you got authority through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's time for you to walk in that authority. It is time for you to walk in that authority. Hallelujah, it's time for you to believe it. Speak over it. Speak over your babies. Speak life. Speak freedom. Declare freedom in the name of Jesus. Come on, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom. The Spirit of God is here. There's freedom. There's freedom in this place. There's freedom in this house. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. 